Hey, hey, look, look out! I think the volcano is going to explode! Stop being such a negative Nero, Cassandra! I'm painting my pottery over here! Yeesh! Hey, I think those are Viking ships on the horizon. God, Jeremiah, I'm trying to read my book here. Why do they bring politics into everything? Yeah, but do you remember the last time they showed up at Linda's farm? Vikings are going to raid. It's what they do. I'm gonna go read my book over there. Oh, wow. Have you seen this new NDA from Games Workshop? It looks crazy. Who cares? Stop being so negative. Businesses are going to act like businesses. Whatever, I'm gonna go paint some minis. Hey everyone, my name is Discourse and today I wanna to talk about negativity in the miniature wargaming community. But let's be honest, we're really talking about Warhammer specifically here. And that's not to say there aren't issues in other game communities, I'm just not as exposed to them as often. One of the criticisms that this channel sometimes gets is that it's overly negative. It's negative about Games Workshop and it's filled with criticisms. And I get that. Some of the most popular videos on the channel are what I would call critiques. They are critiques of the new Orc models that just released, or critiques of Games Workshop's handling of small content creators. But I also do other content. I have a video on money saving tips for the thrifty consumer and a full discussion on recasting. And don't be telling anyone, but I plan on doing a new series soon that spotlights smaller miniature games. So subscribe to the channel to get notified of when that comes out. But these comments on the channel echo a broader narrative that I see often regurgitated about the Warhammer community. This is the seemingly eternal battle between those who are always positive about Games Workshop versus those who are always negative about Games Workshop. But this binary isn't real, right? This conflict is a phantom. We all have positive and negative thoughts about most things. Obviously, there's things on the margins that we have no time for, like Monopoly. Ugh. But for most things in the world, we'll have mixed feelings about it. And even if our opinion today is very certain, it might not be that way tomorrow. And that's important. We need to be able to adapt to our circumstances and evolve with the times as we reflect on things and our context changes. This must have been useful for running away from lions or something. But definitely, as a community, I think we've all noticed that it can be pretty polarized sometimes. And this isn't great, honestly because it hurts our ability to come together to demand change or to simply enjoy the hobby. And really, it obfuscates the fact that we are all hobbyists in this together. So why is this? And why does it sometimes feel like the negativity is growing? So in business, there is a mysterious and very important substance known as consumer goodwill. And this is an intangible asset that businesses have to manage, no matter how big or small they are. And goodwill can be thought of like a resource like command points, for example. And companies can build up this goodwill. And they can do that by serving the needs of consumers with quality products, by demonstrating value and anticipating potential problems, by listening to feedback from customers, and importantly, by establishing a long-term relationship with their customer base and treating them with respect. Goodwill is a long-term play. It isn't used to score a quick buck. Think of it as part of a strategy rather than a tactic. Hell, it's why I affiliate with very specific companies. Because they've taken the time to build up that goodwill by acting in ways that are valuable to the consumer. And if you want to help out the channel, check those links out in the description of this video below. And throughout Games Workshop's long history, there have been times where they have cultivated goodwill. When Games Workshop make the right moves, they earn the affection of the community generally. And when they do things that consumers like, it allows them to get away with actions that they otherwise might be criticized for. If you're bringing out affordable models and doing deep discounts on starter sets and treating your customer base fairly, then people are more forgiving if you refuse to update your Eldar models for 20 years. Having a lot of goodwill to draw on is almost like having an insurance policy. But by this stage, Games Workshop have doubled down on a lot of bad business decisions. Like for example, raising prices during one of their most profitable years ever recorded. An anti-consumer action like that spans a lot of the goodwill that they had previously generated. And over the last couple of years, Games Workshop have pretty much spent all they had. They don't have much of their reserves left. And consequently, a lot of hobbyists just don't trust Games Workshop to make things right anymore. 
when they take any actions that are anti-consumer or could even be potentially construed as such, they immediately get criticized by members of the community because they are doubling down on their worst impulses. And it's perceived as just the latest in a long list of excess, like Slanesh. And to be perceived like Slanesh is bad for a company. Eventually, they get spoken of in the same breath as Comcast or Nestle or Corn. Some companies do not need goodwill. For example, Walmart or Amazon. They don't care about what consumers think of them because they are such large entities with such a dominant position in their respective marketplace that they have no need to court consumers at all. They basically let their scale and cheaper prices edge out any competition. In a marketplace like this, consumers can't do anything about it. At that stage, you need legislation. However, Games Workshop are not Walmart or Amazon. They actually do rely on goodwill and their reputation. The miniature wargaming hobby is big, but it's not big enough to sustain a company like Amazon. It's a niche market. Consumers actually have a lot of power in a market like this. And the discourse in the hobby really does impact on a company like Games Workshop. And they, whether they know this or not, need to respond to the desires of the community. However, one of the major problems that I identify with Games Workshop's business right now is that they have begun to act as if they don't need goodwill at all. They're behaving like EA. Their reputation is in tatters, but they can lumber around because of the licenses that they've acquired. However, to be frank, Games Workshop don't have that luxury. They think they do, but they don't. To quote Blizzard, who are another great example of a company who have spent all their goodwill and who are now rightfully being raked across the coals not only for their pernicious style of monetization, but also their internal treatment of vulnerable members of staff. There's only so much that making an amazing game 20 years ago can protect you from. Games Workshop, I believe, think that consumers will buy into their new models no matter the cost. But every time they indulge in bad behavior, they lose more and more customers and alienate potential new hobbyists too. This is the invisible damage that is dealt to our hobby through bad practices. So when people criticize Games Workshop's actions, and those actions happen to be anti-consumer or predatory, the critics should not be blamed for bringing this to the community's attention. They are not the ones at fault. The fact of the matter is, Games Workshop are to blame for their own actions. The reaction of the wider community should be predictable to them by now, because they don't have the goodwill to simply coast on anymore. And by this stage, they know that. They just don't care, as far as I can tell. So when Games Workshop do something, I just give you my opinion on that matter. But you should be warned, I have a particular perspective. I will always side with consumers. To bring it back to the beginning of this video, I am not inside the binary of always hating or always loving Games Workshop. I am beyond that paradigm. I have transcended the narrative. I have a different goal from simply hating on or loving Games Workshop products. I want the hobby to be better for everyone. And I don't think that will happen if I uncritically accept every new development as it comes. I prefer to think about the things that happen in our community and their implications and how they might change the hobby that I love. Sometimes I think that these developments are good. Like when the hobby is made to be more accessible through things like contrast paints or when everyone is explicitly encouraged to join. Or sometimes I think that those developments are bad, like when the prices rise and small content creators are taken advantage of by predatory NDAs. And I think that most miniature wargame hobbyists agree with that perspective. It's why I made the channel. I think it's valuable to contribute this to the community. And all this is to say, I don't just set out to be negative about Games Workshop. It's not like I have an ax to grind here. They haven't sent the Inquisition after me and they haven't drowned a kitten in null oil as far as I'm aware. I just wish they'd give me more opportunities to be positive. I collect Warhammer Fantasy, Age of Sigmar, 40k, the Middle Earth strategy battle game, Kill Team, Necromunda, and loads more games. I don't exclusively play Games Workshop products, but I play a lot of them. I enjoy their products, but I do not enjoy their business model. And I find it predatory because it's designed to cater to big spenders and seeks to convert average consumers into wheels. And there is a strange contingent of consumers in our hobby who are willing to rush to the defense of Games Workshop when any level of critique is aimed at it, regardless of the rationale or form of that critique. A broad brush is applied to anyone that questions GW's actions. And it's one thick coat, not even two thin layers. Come on!
But Games Workshop is a corporate entity. It does not have feelings. It acts in a marketplace. And as consumers, whether we like it or not, we do as well. And we have the power to shape that marketplace with our decisions, our discourse, and our subsequent actions. Games Workshop does not have to inevitably act the way that it does. It doesn't need to hide exclusive models in bundles in order to survive. It doesn't need to produce limited runs of starter boxes in order to survive. And it sure doesn't need to take advantage of small content creators in order to survive. This is a big company. It is one of the biggest in the UK. It doesn't need individuals to rescue it, I promise. And that's how this works. That's how consumer advocacy works. And the bad things in this hobby will never change unless they're exposed and talked about. As a community, we need to be able to identify problems and talk about solutions. That is how we get a better hobby for everyone. Many people tell me they want to just sit and paint miniatures. That is fine, I do that too. And sometimes it's all I want to do. Well, I prefer assembling over painting, but you get the point. But to be frank, I love this hobby because it helps me alleviate the stresses of the world. But I don't ignore them. And for those who do just want to hobby without thinking about stuff, unfortunately, even they are impacted by the actions of Games Workshop. If Games Workshop ups their prices, that hobbyist is directly affected. If Games Workshop decide to increase power creep, and many hobbyists drop out as a result and the community gets smaller, that hobbyist is directly affected. If Games Workshop implement pernicious non-disclosure agreements that undermine the integrity and independence of online reviewers, then that directly impacts every single hobbyist. Because who will warn the community if the next product is Finecast? We are a community and these things impact us all, whether we like it or not. We do indeed live in a society. Bottom text. Because Games Workshop's primary goal is to acquire profit and they have demonstrated consistently with bad behavior that they want to do so by any means necessary. And I talk about this on the channel a lot because, well, they keep doing it. I do not feel that it is toxic to call this out when it happens. In fact, I think quite the opposite. I think it's the only responsible thing to do. Because how will Games Workshop change if they never receive any feedback? Think of critique like maintenance. I don't want Games Workshop to die, but sometimes I get concerned that they're going to destroy themselves. And whether you like Games Workshop or not, they will never strive to be better unless they are forced to care. If they don't get any pushback from the community, then they might just take something too far. And by then, it will be too late. And if you think the same, please subscribe to the channel. And also check out my Patreon. And members of the Patreon, like those listed on the screen now, get access to behind the scenes content, early access to the intros, and even a saucy discord rank. Oh, and please give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye And even if you don't play Games Workshop products, you should be concerned about the actions that they take. If Games Workshop's predatory practices are rewarded, then other companies will be emboldened to do the same. This is an active hobby, not mindless consumption.